Hey everybody, welcome to Philo Dreams on NCBN TT. My name is Steve David, I'm your host. Today we talk football as usual, and I have with me two of my favorite analysts. Uh, let me take time to introduce them. They call him AC, Anthony Clark. Welcome to the set. It's always a pleasure, Steve. Thank you very much. And they call him JG, Jefferson George. Welcome to the set, Jefferson. Thank you, Steve. Always a pleasure to be here. <laughs> okay. Uh, today we want to talk, as usual, but we want to talk barbershop style. And we want to talk about the TT versus the rest of the world. I'll explain what that is. I'm going to set the stage for this conversation and TT versus the rest of the world because I was talking with Leroy Dillion last night as a matter of fact and trying to figure out you know we're talking about we have all the talent and we have great players and with this and with that but still we end up stagnant and there's a lot of teams under us coming and past us so we was we was brainstorming and said maybe our mental part of the game is where we we hurting because we don't we can't lift our game to the occasion and I would explain that as well. Um, like in the U.S., they have a regular league to run, and then you're playing in that regular league to make the playoff. And then they select like six teams or whatever among the teams. And then you go into a playoff and that's when they really, the heat really starts because now you're into, so they learn to, to play during the season in mediocre, not mediocre style, but aggressive enough, um, competitive, but they get combative when they into the playoff. Mm -hmm. So I want us to discuss that to see if that could be one of our problems because we are trying to help our administration figure out what our problem is because we put in the hours, we put in the, the effort, but we don't get the result and I think we're not going that one step further to be combative when we play international football. Um, so I look at, again, from my experience, and uh, I have seen U.S. little teams in the U.S. lift the game and they play so much more aggressive than we do and they put so much their heart into it when they play. Unlike us, we play like how Brazil play and I always say that Brazil has so much talent. But if they ever take it combatively there's no team in the world going to beat them because they're, they're so talented. And I feel, that, I feel that we do the same thing. So I want us to break that, chew that bone up a little bit and see if we can figure out where, and it may, may not be mental, but I want to see where we can make, um, give somebody some ideas and, mm -hmm. and, or put our fingers on where we can make make the change to go from where we at at neutral to a higher level i'll open it up for uh, like i said barbershop discussion what do you guys think mm, yeah. um <laughs> see if i could start by doing a comparison mm -hmm. um when i was younger and in my prime of being a footballer and right, looking to achieve or make the national team, make other senior teams and so on. I used to, and it wasn't me alone, right, Leonson and I, we used to, on off days, on mornings before, we would go and train on our own and that is something that I don't see right nowadays. So, and that is an aspect of mental attitude and ability that you want to improve. You personally want to improve. You don't only wait on uh, the day of training to do what your coach tell you to do. We would stay back after training. The equipment manager will be, hey, right, I need the balls. We want to work 
extra hours. Um, if our fitness level wasn't good, we would have gone on a run and tried to get our fitness level up on our own. And in my experience from Hobby Connection um, coming forward, I didn't see that. I didn't see that with the generation after our W Connection um, thing. I remember Jeff, I used to ask mm. Jeff to come out earlier, yeah. <laughs> right? And mm. stay back later because that's how I knew it had to be done for him to right, reach where he had to reach mm. or where I wanted him to reach as well. So I think there's um, a bit of mental toughness that is lacking in our present day players. Um, we were what I called students of the game. We bought football books. We mm. read coaching books, um, you know, to understand the game. And, um, and at that time, part of the connection, all that was free. <laughs> right? We were amateurs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think, the, I think also that we also have a lot of competition now with all the technology and so on, the iPhones and right, the iPads and the tablets and so on. And that has taken away some of the attraction of outdoor sports, right? Whatever it may be, and we're speaking about football. But I'll let Jeff add to that. Yeah. Uh, fantastic topic, Steve. And um, I think Clarky did a good job of, of laying a good foundation. Um, we, we can take a couple of views on this we could narrow it um when we speak about mental um suggest the things that we you know particularly put in terms of thought behind the game or, or we can um i think probably have a broader view which might be better to um probably define that mental aspect as anything that is non-physical so it's not dealing with your skill preparation or your um physical conditioning right your gym what have you and um i think that for me is one of the areas where most of the teams who are not competing at the top level in the world can you know see real real significant gains if we, we pay attention um mm -hmm. to that and um one of the things is the, the way that we prepare players all right, um, like you already mentioned, some of it, it, it has to do with having an a approach that is, that is educational, right? Or, or in some ways, um, you know, academic, for one of the two. Because the, doing or, or carrying out a skill, even understanding the game itself, there's a there's an there's an academic side to it where you have to actually know things right it, it's not um instinctive as many people would think right although some players do have very good what we would call instinct right and th that would give them um a, an edge correct when they compete in right but when you have that plus you have a good knowledge base you're able to, to recover for when things go wrong, you know what went wrong and you're able to make adjustments rather than just you know trying to get in what we call a flu and hope that things go even, well. Even in the spur of the moment. Yeah, the game. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Exactly. Right? And that is one of the things if we going again now to do comparisons, you recognize that um, and everybody would be would be familiar with your you know your typical american teams right the first thing people would say is that but you know them guys we better than them <laughs> you know but they won the games right and that is where you know we would come to understand that uh talent one of the things that you mentioned of the uh, of the bat is overrated right very much so because there are you know hundreds of players that i know all of us can list that we would say this person was they were really talented they were probably more talented than this one or that one who reached a much higher um, level than they did right and again that in itself proves that the the talent that of course we have here in abundance 
we have to add a lot more of that um, mental and psychological aspects in order to create a better product. Yeah, because we have this we jamming still attitude. <laughs> you know, we 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 in the game. Things not going good, and not every time things will go good for you. The ball doesn't bounce for you, but your your, your mental toughness is going to carry mm -hmm. you through that. You have to find a way to make an impact on the game. Mm -hmm. Of course, and I don't feel we do that, and and I always feel like the American players do it better than we do. And but I looked at it as again, and I say, look, the English league plays pretty much the same league like we do. We, they play a whole season and the team that end up with the most points win. Mm -hmm. Unlike in America or in Spain and those places do that too. They have knockouts like the FA which is tougher to win because you have to be mentally strong because every time you play is either you in or you out. So I feel our, we need to think about that as a nation and see if we can get our players to, to, to think that way when it comes to football. I guess, and I'm talking about internationally. I mean locally, like let's say, we're playing with the youths. They have to be competitive. They have to enjoy the game and have fun. And as we go higher, we get competitive. But when we go international, we should be combative. Yeah, correct me. Yeah. And, and, and I don't think we, we're making that, that job. Um, mm -hmm. I think it In starts as well, Steve, from, from that young, youthful age. Yeah? Um, if we look at other countries, um, and right, right, some of the less fortunate countries, in fact, right, not only the less fortunate countries, but the players that emerge out of those countries and the stories you hear behind yeah. them, they come from a struggle and it's an outlet for them. It's mm -hmm. a right right it's a way to right it's a profession. It's not a profession in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. It's not seen as a profession in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. It's not seen as an option in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. Right? You hear the stories of Ronaldo mm -hmm. and Robinho and these mm -hmm. fellas where they come from, Pele, where they come yeah. from from the slums. And it was their only avenue out of the slums. Mm -hmm. Right. And they were tough from yeah. that age because of where they came from right. and they knew what they had to do to get out of that right, right situation they were the only hope for their entire family sure right and that type of toughness right you can't manufacture that you have to have that internally you have to have that right within you to want to excel mm -hmm. and to want to achieve and I think that is what some of us are lacking some of us um, I, I, right, you know who has that? And who, right, one of the last players that I saw that had that? The present national coach, Angus Eve. And he, mm -hmm. right, it, it, it actually translates in his coaching. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, right, it translates mm -hmm. in his coaching. He wants, yeah, hunger. but he yeah. can't put himself mm -hmm. in these guys. Mm -hmm. He has that hunger. To improve on the game and he feels that listen if I get there I could I could make this happen and and, and I'm I'm thinking that he's yeah. seen his challenge you yeah. know yeah. with <laughs> these guys not um, right even the last games right some of the last games in the right was it the Gold Cup qualifying he yeah. right saw so guys losing, yeah. yes yeah right so guys losing mm. possession of the ball and they just turn yeah, around and looking yeah. and seeing who who are who going to win it back mm. for them and mm. That shows that mentally we're not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that's a good point when it um, when we're talking about that type of, um, if you want to call it mental toughness. And I remember um, Rene Simonis, right, was one of the coaches who's making the, the, the point that the, our life, right, is too easy. Now, you, you, you made a comparison between us and Brazil. Brazil. Right, and now obviously he, him being Brazilian, he he identifies the, the same type of trends, right? Because we we easy going, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And um, the the what he was identifying there is that the ones who don't have 
that desire first to that desire to be a, a, a champion right to really achieve not just to um, show up at the training but to make the team right not just to make the team but to win the game when you play you know and that's the things that he kind of you know begins to look for because at the end of the day you, you would need that grit when you are in a competitive environment to overcome your opponents right and, and much more so in a combative environment ex ex exactly exactly so now you find um persons who, who who don't have that mentality when they try to you know play physically or, or try to become combative in the game it, it tends to show that they literally fall in Right, and that's what they, you know, most people are going to say, hey, you have to be more aggressive. You think, all right, you're just going to fall people. <laughs> you know, but that's, that's not really, uh, aggression shows up even in attack. You know, so, so it's not just a matter of, yeah, exactly. It's not just defending because that's the first type of understanding people will get about aggression, mm -hmm. right? But you can, as, as um, Clarky mentioned, you, can, you have attackers, wingers, center forwards who are very aggressive. Peter Prosper is the one who comes to mind, you know? And, and that is, again, a part of the mentality. And for me, I, I think we know it's not something that, um, that probably can be coached, but you have to be able, as a coach or in, a, in any program, to be able to identify it. And I think that's, where, that, that's the part we need to probably add to our um, structure, you know, in terms of identifying that the, the, the nature and nurturing that type of um, ability to compete. And I, th I believe we learned that um, again as we, we go fur further but as professionals we definitely learn it. When we come back, we have to take a break, but when mm -hmm. we come back I will give you another um, point that Lyra and I talked about. Viewers will be right back after the short break. Join us for your movie classics on NCBN TT Television Network every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. with repeats on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. NCBN Television, the number one online television network, bringing you the classics. Okay, for the ones who are now tuning in, you're looking at NCBN TT, and this is Field of Dreams. Okay, guys, um, another thing we, and I'm giving you some of the points that came out in our conversation was, Leroy said to me, <laughs> the teams that 
has mental strength is the ones that play in the cold countries where there's snow, which was a very excellent point because you know the four seasons you know we get up every morning and we walk out the house without shirt <laughs> because it's you jam it still it's an easy <laughs> light way of life uh, but then i point unto him i said wait a minute i don't think it snows in brazil and brazil is south america and it, it might get a little cold but not it doesn't snow and they win world cup so you can't tell me only the uh, um because he said only the the winners of world cup only countries that snow. And I mm. said, no, no, no. So I point to Brazil. And I address why. Mm. Huh? And I address why in Brazil. Because the players that emerge right. come from right, yeah, the slums and the hardships right. and the, right, and the, yeah. and, right, and it's that own, right, it's mm. their only way out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they are the only hope for their entire family mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to make it. And, and that's why Brazil is... Yeah, you can see that. Yeah. Right? And you hear the stories of the Brazilian yeah. players. Right. Right, and so that that brings me to the point that maybe we have to go through something that make us that tough. That's why I am always happy and grateful. I came from Point Fortin because we didn't have it. If I was living in Port of Spain, I said I probably wouldn't be the same Steve Day. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that alone tells you you have to go through something. Yeah. And I and I said to him, you know, you partly right because. I could be dead tired in the field and coming back and trying to get a breather and if a ball push through where I can score, yeah. no tired, the tired is gone. It's, you just right, it's not only and going mentally. through something, huh, Steve? It also has to deal with your personal ambition, you wanting to achieve something. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to go through something. Yeah. I mean, I had an easier life. My mother yeah. was a teacher, right? My father was... Uh, right, a senior police officer, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. right, I went to the so called prestige schools, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> I wanted to be someone, yeah. right? Right, and 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 um, I, I, I had right the perfect right mentors, mm -hmm. right? Steve used to come and pick me up and take me mm -hmm. to those games, and yeah. I used to see yeah. the effort that he would put in and what he would right. have done, and yeah. right, to reach where he, he reached, and I wanted to be. Right, not Correct. be like mine, but be like Steve. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, ambition has a part to play. Pride has a part to play. In that, this is for your country. This is for your community. This, and if you don't have those things inherently mm -hmm. in you, and see those things as important, mm -hmm. then you're not going to. That. No, but maybe if you went through some dirt. No, I agree with that point. You yeah. might have been. Yeah. 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 No, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree with that okay. point yeah. wholeheartedly. But yeah. I'm, I'm saying, even if you don't have that, yeah. or even if you didn't get that, right. and you have some pride for community self and other things, yeah. right? You can. Right, as we oh. as we pick that apart, I I want to agree with the right with that statement that the environment has a lot to play. Hundred percent with. You know the the type of development that we get mm -hmm. right or the reaction to the environment yeah. because the same environment that caused you to be tough would break somebody else <coughs> right <coughs> and um i use another quote from otto fister the german who, who worked with and he made uh, a similar point now you're you saying that um, the, the the discussion was that the countries will have snow mm -hmm. the point he was making is countries who fought wars have a different mentality mm -hmm. and because of ha having to go into an environment of real combat war that is that's real that's real combat that's real um you know life, and, death, life and death right so then you're you you you're not um you, you know you're not very light on strategies you know you're not light on preparation because that can be a difference between you Life and death. Survival, you know, and, and, and you know, your demise. So that point, I think, ca carries a lot of weight where you, the development of players is concerned. And again, in terms of the way we can, you know, transfer those things to, to, to bring some type of food into the players, again, is by 
managing the environment in which the players develop, right? Clarky mentioned him being able to, although having, you know, a, a very comfortable upbringing, but being able to see what is required. And again, that is a, a, a type of environment that you were able to experience, yes. right? So you, you know what was required, you know the level of sacrifice and dedication that it would take to get you to a particular level. Now, that is so important because players today, when we look at um, how our, our programs and we could use any sport where this is concerned, the, the level of competition that you would experience would, would come from what is now a more uh, organized and, and, and kind of manicured setting. Well, well, well Jeff, if, right, if I may, mm. I want to expand that. It's not just the level of competition. It's the culture of the country. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. the culture of your country where you come from. Right. If you are, uh, take for example the Germans. Mm -hmm. The Germans are structured, organized. Yeah, yeah. yeah very methodical. Yeah. Very methodical. Mm -hmm. The US on the other hand, although they are new to football, they're the youngsters in football, right. they believe that they are the best at everything. Yes. And that's the culture of the country. So. When you are developing a team, they come in with that, that we are the best Correct. and we should be at the best. And they will yeah. do everything to try to get there. Correct. Correct. That, 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 is, that is exactly the, the point that we're making here. Because now, if you can't get the, the, the you know, players through a program where um, your starting team would have eliminated, you know, four, five, or six times their players before they get there, you have to find a way to now create that, right? Again, in an unstructured environment, playing football in the streets, playing football in the park. If you get to the, to, to the park late, Steve, back in the day, you ain't going to sweat, mm -hmm. right? And not only just that, in order for you to get a sweat, you had to be at a good level, <laughs> right? So again, that wasn't something that a coach did the environment you had to raise to the level that you was able to you know that you were able to um, impact how impact on your and football. that brings in the point that i always make about technology mm -hmm. you don't have that competition outdoor competition again you have yeah, indoor yeah, competition indoor, yeah, now yeah. you no longer yeah. have that competition of being Right, somebody is better than you outside yes. because it's so mediocre. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, so, yes. so the ones who are at the top, they suffer because there's no competition. It's easy to get to the top, right? So even the, the level they should be at, you know, even they, they have been robbed of that opportunity to, to, to be challenged all the way up. Well, just last week in my academy, I was saying to them guys, <laughs> When we practice it now, you are in competition with each other. They said, no, we're teammates. I said, mm -hmm. no, you're in competition for one of those right. jerseys that hang there, one right. to 11, yeah. and you have to get one. So you, those are your competitors. Right. And then when we put it on the shirt, then we become a team. Teammates. And you see, so I think all that flow over into we just yeah, mindset again. Mindset again. Mindset again. Mindset again. There you are creating that environment because Correct. that mindset that I have to <clears> compete <throat> to get, I have to be one of the 11. I have to be one of the 11. Right. As a goalkeeper, Blackie, I have to be the one. The right. one, yeah, right. right. Yeah, no 11. <laughs> 11. Right. You know? Yeah. So again, the mindset, the way they're seeing it, by my teammate, you know? So there is no, within the training environment, and that's where that where team starts. is then, but exactly. That's why that team isn't going to be able to go out and represent them. But if there's a lack of competition, that mindset is, is one of being a part of this thing, regardless of whether I'm on the team or not, mm -hmm. then something is definitely going to be lacking when it comes to that level of competition. Even to take it further, and that's why I, I like coaches who pick the team the week of practice. Not everybody. There's people who sure to get a shirt, regardless yeah. of how yeah. they practice and how they do because they, yeah, they show that <laughs> they have more skill but if you pick your team based on what you do that week you yeah, see different, be different different attitude yeah. so all these are things that we do that affects our ability to be 
strong minded and tough minded because we could walk in the field and and still play. Yeah. The coach still be on because you're the best player. Yeah. And that is why I'm an advocate, Steve, for our national teams to play tougher competition. Because I think us being the best in the Caribbean for so many years was a disadvantage to us. Mm. Because you never had a Trinidad team going out to play Italy and all it. We would have always played in the Caribbean and yes, continue yeah. to uh, demolish yeah. the <coughs> right Caribbean teams. And that meant that our standard never went further than that. Mm. Right? We were better than the US. Mm. Right? The US couldn't compete with a Trinidadian football team. Mm. Right? And, and, and now, where are we? Right? We. we Right, we right, we're not even there. Yeah. So, but the other teams in the region have come up to our standard because they saw something where they had to reach for. They saw a position where they wanted to reach. They needed to dethrone these people, and they worked and they worked and they worked at even hiring our coaches to coach there: Guyana, Grenada, Barbados, mm -hmm. wherever. Right, the place may be. And that is why I've always been an advocate for our national teams to stop playing within our region when we get our international break. Right? Go play. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe the Italian teams and the Brazilian teams don't want to play against us, That's but true. you can go and play a club team there, mm -hmm. which will be at a different mm -hmm. level. Right? A higher level. And then, as you beat mm -hmm. these club teams, you know what? The, 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 right, the world will start to look at you differently. Right? And the U.S. has done that. Every time there's an international break, they make sure they run tournaments for their club teams mm -hmm. to play against Milan, yeah. to play against yeah. Chelsea, to play against Man United. You have these tournaments being run yeah. in the U.S. so that their players can see what it is at that level. Mm -hmm. And then we can't mix up, though, we can't cross up. Um, sometimes it's discipline, eh? For, for the it training. It is discipline. Mm -hmm. For the training and stuff, but we can be very disciplined. We can go and work and work out and stuff and stuff. But when the going gets rough, the tough gets going. And that's what I'm talking about. When we get to the point that we did the brink of exhaustion and we're still pushing ourselves through it. Even in practice, we had to practice it. We, to the brink of exhaustion, we're still pushing ourselves through it. But Steve, we, get it as a we lack discipline as a culture and as a country. True. We have social mm -hmm. issues here where anywhere else in the world or the tough countries in the world, they will come out and they will boycott. Mm -hmm. You have food prices yeah. going up, they will mm -hmm. boycott. Yeah. And you see the whole country doing that. We hear about this tomorrow, <laughs> next week, nobody is, right? Yeah. right. So as a country, we are not disciplined for any one purpose, mm. except carnival, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, yeah, you missed that. <laughs> except carnival, yeah. right? That is the only thing that we have a real yeah. purpose for and we will quarrel for. Carnival is cancelled. But we don't have that same discipline mm -hmm. and purpose for any of the real issues mm. of life. Mm. Right, yeah. right. It just washes off our yeah. back. Yeah. But, but that's that's um that's a good point uh, that Steve's making there with the, in terms of, um, being able to apply yourself throughout a game, right? I remember, um, being on a, a panel that was discussing um, the Caribbean football, and w w a person from Costa Rica, right, was sharing some of their insights and. They knew that in the first 10 minutes of the game was where Trinidad would be vulnerable. And in the last 10 minutes of each half was where they would you actually to look for... Yeah, because that is where it is. Now, at the end of the day, you start <laughs> slow and then you, you build up. <laughs> but when you build up now, you get to the point where you fatigue it's and then you pitch off. Right? And again, now, <coughs> the environment itself, <coughs> if the training isn't set to a consistent level of intensity, 
and players have to you know carry out that intensity throughout then that becomes part of you know your setup and again as your mental setup because you teams you could look at teams play and you you realize you know all around the 15 to 20 minutes all right that's probably where you're going to be at your best and then from the 30th going on what's it's going to fall off right and again that shows that that mental application throughout is not, is not sustainable. Yeah. Right? I had a teammate like that when we play indoor football because I, I, I come on to, on the second uh, five. Every two minutes we change. So I always wanted to watch the first five play. And every game I notice he get two or three chances in the first minute of the game. And he didn't convert. And I said, Richie, I said to him, every game I've watched over this period, you've had two or three chances in the beginning of the game. You need to put one or two of those away and make the game easier. And he said, oh, he said, Trini, Trini, yeah, 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 you're right. And he, he started to concentrate a little bit more. Yeah. And he started to get goals in the first, <laughs> the first two minutes of the game. He scored. And where was he from? He's a, he's a he's Jamaican um, born, but Canada, I think. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's, that's <coughs> a real thing. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, you know, all of that. I will tell you what. Uh, with the national team in Haiti, Warren Archibald, if we have a, a combative player, that's him. And he is, we sit down night after night just talking football. That is where I got most of my experience because I was an amateur then. And I got a lot of experience before I turned pro, right after that. But he would sit down and he would, and he would drill you. And this, this guy, he is so combative, man, when he plays the game, that I see nobody as combative as, combative as he is. And, and he always, and he said, don't let him do that then. And he, he is unbelievable. Yeah. And I see if we had 11 players like him, and even in, we play in a Sunday morning in New York when he's around, and some say, actually you old, where you? And he say, I hope, and you get the ball, and you can see, <laughs> <That's all right>. <laughs> dying. <laughs> I hope, I hope, I hope, you yeah. know, like that. And, and, and you know, the breathing hard. Yeah. Okay. You just want to show you that, hey, it's because of, yeah, all the time, yeah, yeah. I'm going through yeah. emotions. <laughs> But, oh Lord, but that is the kind of combativeness we need. Yeah. And I don't think, and I think we need to work on that. But we, and I think that is part of the, what our technical staff needs to see if they can get their players to. And, and, and as I mentioned, I think that one of the players that stands out mm -hmm. uh, for me after my time that had that spirit still was Andersi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that he is, he is perfectly poised to try to deposit that into the players. Some of our problems that continued were that with the foreign players coming back home, they always felt that they had to walk in the team. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem for us, mm -hmm. right? We have a lot of the locals training while we are out of competition and we don't carry them anywhere to improve their skills. Mm -hmm. So the foreign base players are playing overseas, they are getting more and more experience and so on. And when they come back, they just walk into the team. Mm -hmm. And they know that every tournament they are going to be called to walk into the team. Mm -hmm. And there isn't a point where it's about, look, I don't need you this time because Anthony Clark, right, right, yeah, right yeah, he up to scratch, yeah. and you know, well, after everybody coach, mm -hmm. I'll still come back. Let me just train, mm -hmm. and, and, and that is not there. Mm -hmm. And most of our players and our foreign based players, where they feel that I come and I walk yeah. into the team. Yeah, yeah, that's a that, that's a, a a good point. And again, it, it would come down to uh, again, what process are we using to evaluate the locals? Because if they aren't given an opportunity to um well of course they're addressing the coach daily in in training and so on um the the 
opportunity to play these games, give will allow these players themselves, right, again to be tested um, in, in, in match situation and be able to, to really, again, compete for a position, you know, on the team, right? But again, one of the things, if we look at um, some of the things we continue to do, could this be contributing as well to a lack of that, you know that mental application to uh, in the players. It is. You know, because if we, if if we keep denying them that opportunity, then it's only a matter of time before the players begin to go through emotions. But it's not just. You see, uh, the preparation of those players has to be the same as what the foreign based players are getting. So mm -hmm. you must have international right. games. Right. And if you don't have those international mm -hmm. games, right, uh, for these players, mm -hmm. then. Right, it's going to be a problem. I remember, you know, I always had these discussions. I don't know how it will be done, mm. but I would have, you know, approach the government, approach some of these players, and some of the good players. You try to get them into a, a team internationally, mm. but not have the financial burden. Right. The team internationally not have the financial burden until that player comes right. to scratch. Right. I at one point of time during Toby Connections time, I right you ask David, you know, I think we need to see if we can get into the U right what's the lower league of the the the, the uh, USL? United USL? States? USL. USL. Yeah, USL. Yeah. Yeah. Connection needs to go there. Yeah. Right? Because continue playing yeah. in our professional league, I saw that it would not yes. have made sense. Or yeah. Trinidad and Tobago T T F A should try to get their top teams if they call this professionally mm. concentrate on right a zonal football mm. and try to get our top teams into right into, at the usl into the, and into the american yeah. pro league that's the only way we're going to improve mm. now running a local pro league is not going to improve yeah. us mm. it's not going to improve us mm. so yes i see a lot of logistical problems i'm not saying that mm. they are a lot yeah. of logistical <laughs> problems but that is where we have to go yeah. if it is that our standard has yeah. increased so then the the administrators as well need mental toughness <laughs> because we had to go to we had to go for something else yeah you know definitely yeah <laughs> so do you think that um, the cold weather teams are tougher mentally or, or, I, or that is that is a fact I wouldn't say the cold weather teams. I can see the point of the culture of culture, the people right. that are in the cold, cold weather, the, yeah. right? Uh, thicker skin. Countries. Yeah. They have thicker skin. They, right, what Jeff said, countries that have gone to war. Mm. Those are basically the cold weather countries. Europe had, yeah. <laughs> right, <Wars>. right? Europe <laughs> had tons <laughs> of wars with everybody. So, <laughs> yes, it, right, it's, it's a point, and it's also a point of our lack of this culture and style of living it's going to be challenging for us as well all right we're going to take a break now but when we come back um keep in mind i want us to talk about um do we have a psychologist attached to our teams and and what kind of job they do because i've been to one who did a, a human of a job for us um so when we come back Viewers, we'll be right back after the short break. Current affairs. That's it, that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Welcome, one and all. I am Gigi Love. Alongside my psychic, Mr. Ruka. Your partner in crime, Juliet. And we are going to be live on MCBM on a social media platform near you. IG, Facebook, YouTube. We are going to be sensational, tantalizing, thought provoking, dramatic, educational, real, sometimes spiritual, mm, suspense, political analysis, drama. Take no prisoners, Juliet. Don't forget that part. Coming, Coming soon. soon. Hey! 20,000 to rise against we like zombies.
Hi, join us for your movie classics on NCBN TT Television Network every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. with repeats on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. NCBN Television, the number one online television network, bringing you the classics. Welcome back. Um, if you're not tuning in, you missed a lot, and you're watching Field of Dreams and NCBN TT. Okay, guys. Um, we have a last segment, and I want us to talk about, and I don't know. I know when I played with the national team, we had a psychologist, Shirley Rod Otley, 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 Otley. Mm -hmm. and she... I mean, she made a big impact on my psyche. Oh. And uh, I mean, I thought I could run through a wall uh, after she was finished with us. And we should, it took us all the way to Haiti and we had a chant and everything else. And every time we say the chant before we go and fail, it, you felt it. And you went out and you wanted to, to give everything you had. So, and I don't know if that ball was dropped then and we never use it anymore, but it was, and I, before, prior to that, I thought, psychologist, we don't need a psychologist, mm -hmm. but then I understand the impact of what that can do. So I'm wondering now whether our national teams do it or occasionally do it, or if there's anybody attached, and, and, and I want to hear from you guys if you think that would work as part of our development for our mental, mental state? Uh, yeah, I think uh, definitely we will mm -hmm. see you now the benefits of um, having somebody to address um, the psychological aspect, which is obviously important. And um, I think one of the things that many times people think a psychologist is, is a motivational speaker, somebody to come in you know, before a game and tell you that, you know, <laughs> and, and hype you up as a hype man. But um, uh, the, the, the role of a psychologist is a permanent part of a technical staff, right? So it is supposed to be used because it, it's somebody who works together to develop that psychological Changes. aspect, like mm -hmm. the trainer would be doing, um, you know, physical speed, what have you. And that is how important that is managing uh, anxiety managing um, you know the, the expectation of the players mm -hmm. helping to um, maintain focus and so on and I had the opportunity um, at national level and even at um, some club even Princeton in the school where Mr. Bobcom had um, you know persons come in to deal with that aspect and um, obviously I, that is important it is not done um, enough. It is not done widely here, and I think it's something that will be able to add um, significantly to you know our football program. And I'm hope, I hope our national. Yeah, that's what I wanted to find from if our yeah. present national teams yeah. include that. Um, I know there is um, a, a Alexia who works with. Um, I think she was at the futsal and beach soccer. 
I'm not sure if the senior team has someone um, or if she does work with the um, senior team as well, but she's quite good, right? And um, she, she has been working with the, as in those teams, I know the futsal and beach soccer. So if you guys are listening for the national team, consider it. Consider adding a psychologist to the, to the staff because those people work and, and we lack in our toughness and that could help us. Uh, sports psychology is a profession, eh? yeah. mm -hmm. right? And, and um, uh, right, right to my knowledge, most of the professional teams, all of the professional mm -hmm. teams in the US, NFL, NBA, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Right, the teams in Europe mm -hmm. have sports psychologists attached yeah. to their teams, right? So it's a very important issue. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not only to, right, as Jeff said, to hype you up. It is to relieve, get rid of all your other problems, to talk about it and be able to address that so that you can focus on what we are paying you to do. Okay. So let's talk about right, what's happening at home. Let's talk mm -hmm. about Right, what's happening here? Let's so that you have an avenue to get all those off, so that your focus could be what mm. we want it to mm. be. And and right now, it's not only that you have um, some um, investment companies, uh, people that are on Wall Street doing investments for people. They have psychologists, mm -hmm. right, that yeah, they yeah. talk to. Yeah. Right, so that they can keep focused and and right having that option where you can relieve everything else. Their job is to pull everything else away, shred it, mm -hmm. and direct you to the focal point where they want you right to focus on. So mm -hmm. it is a very important aspect. Um, I think we see again our culture sees right somebody going to talk to a psychologist that you've been yeah. right that's something wrong with you mm -hmm. right you are yeah. wako and you yeah. need right somebody to fix you and and, mm -hmm. and that is a cultural thing again yeah. right that we don't see that right this need for if yeah. you have a child i remember all right one of my children had some issues and we took at a psychologist and we were shocked that the things that she was not able to speak to us about because we were her parents. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. was able yeah. to talk to this uh, this stranger about mm -hmm. because they are skilled, they are trained to bring these yes. things out of yeah. people, right? Yeah. The right questions, right atmosphere, so that, and she went on to be an island scholar. Yeah. All right? She went on to be an island scholar. Mm -hmm. The, so, the the idea you know, see, we'll go ahead, go yeah ahead. the in terms of um, the the psychology part of it that is um, of course a clinical mm -hmm. um, discipline right and um, it is of course very expensive as well but there, there's also um, what you call a mental skills coach right and, and I think that um, doing my um, sports studies in UTT as well. Like you, again, there are skills that uh, uh, someone can be trained to learn and players can apply that again. And this is again more game related, right? Things like I imagery training, you know, things like being able to uh, exercises to manage anxiety, right? And um, it, it's very, very important. Th that aspect of it, I think, a lot of our players would never have been exposed to and I know if they can get into that um, there are huge benefits into that as it relates to the game. Yeah, what Shirley Rod Otley had done for me and again that was the first time I ever thing was she put me in that zone that that prepared me for what's ahead mm -hmm. and what's after at the end so mm -hmm. she prepared us for the game and she prepared us for after we win or lose mm, right. for everything. Mm. So it put me in that total zone. So when I, it's like, from the time we chant, we do the chant. Now it's like a switch. I am 
I am in. Yeah. And then I run out in the field. I'm in, I'm in a bubble. And uh, there's nothing else matters to me but that, what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's, it's, the focus is there and nothing outside interferes. And I learned that as a professional. Mm -hmm. Nothing on, uh, you, you run out in the field, yeah. <laughs> you're locked in until you come out of that bubble again. Yeah. And so, so I got that little bit of training before and then I understood I went, as I turned pro right after that, what that was all about. So I felt like, like we f really invincible and the team felt invincible. And we felt like if we went to the World Cup, we would have beat everybody because yeah. we were in that kind of zone. Mm -hmm. but, but what she did was, well, that was excellent is, we developed a chant between ourselves, uh, with her direction of course, so we have a chant, and that chant is like, you hypnotize me, man. It yeah. was like, yep. <laughs> like, once you make the chant, you win, the, you win yeah. and you can't get out. Yeah. And, and we go out there, and that's what I felt. So maybe other people felt differently, but that was my thing. And so I used that ever since after that to put myself in that zone when I was in the field. I, I, I had a couple interactions with Hop Dotley as well. Mm -hmm. um, when I was on um, right the under 16 team and on the un right on other national teams, mm -hmm. right, she was still involved when I was there as well. Right. And she is excellent. Mm -hmm. She is. Yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. No, that that is. I, th I think those are some of the things as we were talking about non-physical um, parts of of our football um, that we need to develop. Right, one of the the other things, um, and it touches on this as well, is again that, uh, you know, trying to develop the, the, the knowledge base of players, you know, because at the end of the day, um, doing and practicing skills, there, you know, you know, there is techniques behind it, there are things that you need to know, right, um, like, you know, your levers and things like that, when you're doing kicking and throwing <coughs> at the goalkeeper, uh, just yesterday was going through that and trying to to, to show players how these skills apply so that you can break it down when mm -hmm. something goes wrong you know what went wrong and you can correct it mm -hmm. right and um, keeping a journal things like that with, for players right so that they are now uh, owning their development so they can look back and see uh, at the start of the season I was you know getting these results because of you know these particular things that I probably you're probably doing, and then if it falls away, what changed? Right, keeping a daily journal. Those things are very very important. And without that, again, the 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 development of that player is is pretty much um, loose. It, it's not really tied to anything that they can relate to. And, and, and I mean, these all have you know huge benefits. I'm glad you mentioned that journal because I was telling my little academy kids as well. Because I said, if anybody had told me that, I would have done this. Keep a journal from now, mm -hmm. all through your football career, and at the end of that, you can write a book and you can make big money off of it. Because if anybody had told me to keep a journal of my progress as I yeah. go, then it's, it's right there. Yeah, exactly. You have it in, in, in exactly. to just yeah. hand it to like somebody to <laughs> say, do a book for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, one of the things I don't know if Jeff remembered is that your child's implemented with the hobby connection um, family was that you had to come to the training field with a book, huh? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he used to mm -hmm. explain the game to you, and you had mm -hmm. to take notes. Right. Yeah. Right. He also always <coughs> did post-game video sessions right. and break down the games for you minute and minute. What mm -hmm. happened here? give you an opportunity to explain where your thoughts were at that point in time. So, psychologically, mm -hmm. you were learning from, and right as Jeff spoke about being able to visually mm -hmm. understand what mm -hmm. is going on, so he did that, right? Um, I know that connection at points and times, mm -hmm. really, also brought in a psychologist to mm -hmm. talk to players and so on and so forth, but of course it's very expensive to have yeah. them right on okay. staff all the time but those other aspects things that you can do uh, ensuring that you do 
post game analysis visually mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. sometimes the player it's believes something else happened True. at the time True. and when he sees it he was like what that yeah is? exactly right yeah. so those are the things that could psychologically also help players to, to, to you know right see themselves analyze themselves improve themselves so mm -hmm. I hope that our national unit also right also does that mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. anything you do away from the field or from the gym, you know, or, or from the track, is actually helping to build and to develop the, the player mentally, right? And that is is I think critical in in terms of seeing some type of change yeah. in in terms of our mental approach to the football. I guess what. 18 minutes, we've, we've come to the end of this <laughs> session, man. I cannot believe how quick this went. But I want to thank you guys for being here, as usual. Jeff, I haven't seen you in a while. Hope all is well. All is well. <laughs> all right, and Clarky, thank you again. I will see you again. And NCBN, TT, thank you so much for giving us, us the opportunity. Viewers, thank you so much as well for tuning in. And you know, Tuesday night is Tuesday night, 8 o'clock. Every Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, we're in. And don't forget, viewers, we have a Facebook page. You can check us out. And we have an email address, philogenett at gmail.com, where you can drop us a line. This show is ended. Go in peace. My name is Steve David. I say good night. <laughs>